Hey, I'm Michael Artsis. Thanks so much for joining us for this Adorama Pro video review. We're flying the Phantom Vision 2 Plus right now, which is a great aerial drone for photography, video, and, well, just having fun. We're going to teach you a little bit about flight safety and talk about some of the benefits of this great device. Check this out. This DJI Vision 2 Plus really improves upon the Phantom 1s. The only drawbacks are the fact that the camera could be a little bit better and the fact that it's got a steeper price. This thing's ready to fly out of the box. It's got a 14 megapixel camera for stills, which looks stunning. Its camera shoots 1080 for video at 30 frames a second and 60 frames a second at 720. Now the camera realistically for video is at the level of about a GoPro 1, maybe even a 2, but it's certainly not where the Hero 3 or 3 Plus are as far as quality, which means that it doesn't do as well in low light, but it does look pretty good. I'd stay away from close-ups. I'd keep everything wide and far away if you're using it for a serious production. As a hobby for fun, it's amazing. And as a spy tool, it's great too. In addition to that, its new battery gives you a 25 minute flight time. And that's legitimate, that is not a joke. But we have three batteries. Because it's just so much fun to fly this thing, you need extra batteries. I'll tell you that the batteries in the remote and your phone don't drain very fast, so you're good with that. So in the past, you had to buy the Zemu gimbal and then mount your GoPro to that. Now you've got the camera on a gimbal on a transmitter, so it sends it back to your iPhone. You also have a booster right here on your remote control that allows you to get the chopper further away and still get a signal to your iPhone. You get both video and some data. You can either record video or take photos. You can't do both at the same time, but what you can do is you can stop your video in air, take a photo. When the photo's done, you can start your video again and you can send your photo and videos back to your phone, not only to look at as you're flying, but you can send it back to your camera roll on the spot and then have it also automatically upload to your social media like Facebook. It's a free app that gives you the feedback from the device, which is great, and that's the DJI app. You don't have to plug it into a PC to calibrate it every time you fly, or even at all. We haven't calibrated it once, and we've got a lot of flight time on it. It's very simple, you put the battery in, you hit the button once for about a second, the lights will come on, then you hold it down for two seconds. You then power up the range extender by turning that on. You then go into your phone and you go into your Wi-Fi settings, turn Wi-Fi on and select Phantom. It has its own network. Then you'll go into the app. Look at the lights on the back of the DJI. If they're solid green, you're ready to go. If they're not, you take the S1 switch, both S1 and S2 should be in the upright position. You flip it back and forth five times until your lights are blinking. Once you flip the switch five times, it goes yellow. You make sure that it's yellow, then you pick it up, you spin the DJI around counterclockwise, you then flip it vertically and spin it around again once you've gotten a solid green light. Once it's flashing green, you put it on the ground, you make sure that through the app you can tell that you're connected to at least four satellites. Now it's time to take off. Boat sticks go down and to the corner at the same time towards each other and the props will start going very fast. You now let go and when you're ready, you slowly accelerate upwards on the left stick. This lifts the DJI up and it's good to fly at a very slow speed to start. So now that you're up in the air, you need to know some things. Your leftmost stick will give you up and down for the height of the DJI. And then if you go left and right, it will spin it around like a top to change the direction it's flying. Your red lights are the front, your green lights are the back. Your rightmost stick will give you forward and back, right and left. Now, if you turn the DJI around to face you, you have to remember that it's now flying the exact opposite direction. So the rightmost stick changes everything, yet the leftmost stick stays the same. Up is still up, down is still down, spinning it to the right or left still spins it to the right or left. And that can get very confusing. So I'd recommend against flying that way until you get very comfortable. You really want the thing going in one direction, which is away from you. And if you wanna bring it back to you, just pull it backwards. One thing I would definitely recommend for this DJI is getting better props because these are a little too flexible and bendy and you definitely will need more props at some point as you take hard landings. Another thing to look out for is that this DJI doesn't land as well as the prior model. It has some issues landing, so be very careful when you land it. The next thing is it's got an app which runs off your iOS device and helps you see your altitude, your flight speed, and your distance 
from the device. In addition to that, it allows you to control the device and take not only video, but photos, and it gives you a whole lot more information, including battery life and, of course, your satellite connections. What's great about the app is that when you fly this thing, you get a visual constantly, continuously, and live sent back to your iPhone to the app. So somebody can be your spotter and look visually, and occasionally you can glance down. So you're not just getting your speed, but you're getting a visual from the camera, and that is terrific. You can tell your flight speed, your distance from you, and your height. If you go too far, you'll lose the connection. Bring it back so that you can get your connection again. So the first thing about flying this thing safely is you want to find a wide open space where there are no obstructions. You don't want tight areas with tall trees, you don't want power lines, and you want to be away from people in cars. The second thing is you've got to put it on the ground before you start the thing up. Make sure your batteries are fully charged and charged up. And the reality is that somebody should be assisting you and be your eyes. They should be looking at your phone, reading the vitals, and looking up in the sky occasionally. Your eyes should always be focused up in the sky at the DJI. You don't want to lose your visual at any time in case something happens here. Now remember that if you did everything right, the DJI will come back to you if it loses its connection, provided it has enough battery to get back. If it doesn't, it will land where it is very slowly and safely. That's what you want to remember if you do get into trouble with it. But the key is to try and fly this thing safely. I'd recommend not flying it too far and not flying it too high, especially because at a certain altitude, about 400 feet, you'll start to get into airspace, which you don't want to do. Keeping it out of airspace is really important because not only can it really damage a plane or helicopter, but it can startle the pilot and cause a real problem. Now, I'm wearing shades because I think shades are a must when you're flying this. Not only safety for you and your eyes, but this will help you be able to keep a visual eye on the DJI. If you can't see because you don't have shades on, you'll lose it. So make sure you've got a good pair of sunglasses that allows you to see. You don't want to fly it over highways or densely populated areas or in big cities, and you don't want to fly it over stadiums or arenas. And you have to remember that people don't know what this is or where it's coming from. So you might be startling them if they see it, and that could change how they react and potentially could cause an accident or a problem. So you have to be cognizant of that too. The thing is a lot of fun and it's great, and it can be a great tool, but you have to fly it safely and that is priority number one. This thing will tell you when the battery is low. Bring it back immediately. Don't waste any time. If you feel like you've lost control of it for even a second, bring it back, figure out what's wrong, and take it somewhere else to fly. If you've lost visual on your mobile device, bring it back immediately. Stop flying it. Just get it back safely. The key to this thing is to keep it away from people, to keep it away from things, and you'll have a lot of fun flying it. It's easy to get overconfident with it. Fly slowly when you start and fly above everything. You don't have to go 500 feet to fly above everything. 150 feet in an area like this is above everything. 100 feet is above most things. But fly it slowly, make slow maneuvers. Don't get too fast, get very comfortable with this. If it lands safely somewhere and you can't find it because it ran out of battery or for some other reason, there is a Find My DJI feature, which is a great feature. If you seem to be losing control of the device because of interference or something else, bring it down safely and stop flying. There's certainly times when you seem like you can lose control in very high RF environments when it loses satellite signal and for some reason when you're near power lines. So that's stuff you have to be aware of. When you fly it higher and further away from things, that's when you can have more fun, let it loose, speed it up, and do more things like that. Now with the controls, especially when you're flying low, you want to make gingerly slow, subtle movements. A full inch in each direction and you're making wild movements. You have to be very careful about flying in wind and bad weather. Wind can carry this thing away and make it get away from you. And bad weather is bad for it. You don't want it to get wet or get it near or in water, especially rain or snow. The bottom line is just don't take chances with the DJI. Fly it safely. You really can't just take it to a shoot without any experience. You've got to train on this thing and see how it shoots in different environments and what you're going to get. I would say you got to put about five to ten hours in on this thing before you could even consider taking it to a real shoot and getting paid for using it. And you've got to watch your footage back. All in all, I think this thing is great. It's got a higher price point, but you get the camera, the gimbal, and the device with bigger batteries, longer flight time, the remote control, and the range extender all for the price point.
I'm impressed by this a lot more than I was with the Phantom One, and there's no doubt in my mind this is a ton of fun and can be a great tool. Thanks for watching this Adorama Pro video review. I want you to have a lot of fun with your DJI Phantom Vision 2 Plus. It's really awesome and it's great fun. You can check it out at Adorama Store in New York City or online on Adorama.com. And don't forget to check out more reviews and videos online as well. I'm Michael Artsis. Be terrific.